Don't forget to like the video and subscribe. Thanks. Hey everyone, welcome. If you're not familiar with this sheet, this is the same sheet that we talked about um, several videos back that explains how we keep records of our flock and what we do with those records. So if you want to learn more about that, please go check out that video. I'll link it in the description below and I'll actually add a card right now in the video so you could click it to check it out. The other thing um, to mention is that while this is not the funnest part of farming, this is a reality of it. So paperwork is important because it shows us a few things. One, it shows us the trends of either certain moms or, you know, of changes that we made throughout that year that affected our lambing. And then also it just gives us how many we have on hand. So when somebody says that, hey, I'd like to get, you know, 50 ram lambs from you, and oh, well, I only have 41, it gives us a better idea of what we have on hand. So without further ado, the numbers are really all broken down right here for us. So everything that was, you know, so if we go up here, anything that was highlighted in red did die. Um, we had a total of six lambs that did die this year, and that's actually the best that we have ever done. And not saying that's something to brag about, but it is very, it's a big improvement for us. We generally lost anywhere from 20 to 25, well, yeah, I'd say 20 to 25, maybe even 30% of our lambs before, um, before we had the barn. The barn has really improved our lambing rate tremendously and also our hay consumption. So of the 77 you adult ewes that we went into breeding season with, 76 are still around. That's what this number is, moms, 65 of 76. We had one that did pass away from a prolapse. Um, her babies also passed away. They were dead before we got home from work. The mom was not far from being dead when we got home from work. It's unfortunate, but it does happen. So of the 76 ewes that we have left, 65 did give birth. Of those 65, they produced a total of 90 lambs. And we can get that number simply by counting this or just by adding up our numbers. But anyways, so right here in the right count of 90. So we have a total of 90 lambs. Of those 90 lambs, we did lose six of them. So we had a loss rate of 6.7%. We had a lambing rate of 138%. The lambing rate is found by taking the number of babies we had, so 90, and then you divide that by 65. And that gives us, in this case, 138%. We have 41 ram lambs that are alive and well. We have 43 ewe lambs that are alive and well. Of those 43 ewe lambs that are alive and well, they will actually stay at our farm. They won't be sold. And they'll be added to our breeding stock. So, for instance, next year, instead of having 76 ewes that are bred, we should have around 119 that are bred. Again, not all of them are going to breed. First-time moms don't always breed that first uh, season that they come into uh, or that they come of age, and we understand that. We have, so of the 65 that gave birth, they're doing well. Of the 76 total, that means 11 did not give birth. Of those 11, we have one that is definitely pregnant and going to give birth probably in the next two weeks, maybe three. So 10 of them just appear that they simply did not take. We're going to give them another chance. If for whatever reason they don't uh, breed next year, then they will be culled from our flock. Again, ideally they should breed right away, no problem. You want them to be very fertile. We're, we're dealing with what we have. We are not going to cull everybody right off the bat because right now we're growing. Once we get to the numbers we want to be at, then we'll start being very picky about who we keep and who we don't keep. Because at the end of the day, a ewe that provides one lamb has already paid for herself. A ewe that provides no lambs didn't pay for herself because she ate much of food, didn't produce a lamb, and is gone. Whereas if we give her another chance and she produces a lamb, now she's paid for herself and her food for her baby for the last two years, for instance. 
So it's just kind of the way we think of things. But these are the important numbers right here from the season. Now, going into that, so the barn has saved us a tremendous amount of lambs. The barn also has saved us a tremendous amount of hay. So last year, for instance, we had a total of 47 breeding ewes. Of those 47 breeding ewes, 43 gave birth. That could be wrong. I'll have to go back and look. But anyways, 43 is what I believe gave birth. And everybody did pretty well. But we lost a lot of lambs due to the weather, due to um, parasite issues, just everything that we couldn't control because we didn't have a barn to keep them in, to keep them only eating hay. So we would roll out a third of a bale of hay every day. And we did that for a total of uh, about 143 days. So we had used a total of 50 bales at the end of it because some of those bales didn't get rolled out we actually put them in a cradle and they would stay in there so they'd always have something to eat so if we rolled something out and let's say that they ate it all or somebody pooped on it whatever they always had something to go eat and they didn't have to chase grass um, in reality they all still chased grass and they wasted most of the hay so last year with 47 adult ewes and two rams so 49 total sheep on hand plus the babies. We went through 50 bales. This year we had 77 ewes going into the season and we had four rams, so a total of, or sorry, five rams, a total of 82 adult sheep and we only used 38 bales. Um, speaks volumes because that means that I used 40% less hay with almost twice as many, you know, like 70% more breeding stock. So we've got a tremendous savings in hay, and then obviously the lambs that we didn't lose is another tremendous savings. So our barn is well on its way to paying for itself. Not saying everybody needs a barn, not saying they can't lamb on pasture, just saying what is working best for us and what also makes it to where it is the simplest for us to manage them. Again, my wife and I work full-time jobs, so it's difficult for us to be there with them nonstop during breeding season. And the larger the flock you have, the more difficult it becomes. I really hope this video gives you some insight into not just our farm, but livestock farming in general, and the amount of effort and planning and preparation that really goes into keeping these animals alive over the winter.